as I was going through my van build, there were certain bits that I did that I didn't really document in enough detail to produce a video. And one of the main ones that I've been asked loads of, loads of questions about is overhead locker. Now, I didn't really do enough. I'm still quite um, no, a novice, new, naive. I don't know which word to use, but maybe both suit. <laughs> But yeah, I was, I was quite naive at what I was doing, so certain things I never thought about. Now, when it comes to utilising space in your vehicle, this is dead space. So, the van conversion that's being done here today is going to be a motocross setup, and the guys want a TV and a PlayStation up there for when they're just chilling in between races, practice sessions, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm down at Cliff's garage, and I thought this is a perfect opportunity. To use some of the voody, video footage, voody, voody. <laughs> I saw this as being the perfect opportunity to use some of the video that I've already made and this build to show you how I built my overhead locker. This is going to be slightly different, but it's the same principle. The only di only difference is with this one, it's not going to have a front on it, so it's just going to be a shelf. So for me, when you want to maximise the whole area, you still want to be able to use your racks that are above your sun visor there you know that's handy for just shoving your phones while they're on charge um putting bits of kit in you know maps and all that sort of good stuff i don't know what's going on here i've gone it's gone kind of dark on me hasn't it has the sun gone in anyway <laughs> this is how we do it first thing to do is remove your headlining your sun visors and your central console um always check that Always have a good look at that, make sure it's sealed. And this is the time when it's worthwhile maybe breaking that seal, buying a new one and putting it on. Or do what a lot of people are doing and change it for a 3D, uh, 3D. <laughs> Honest to God, what am I talking about today? Change it for a DAB aerial. God, I'm just not with it today, I don't know what's going on. Maybe too many, uh, too many happy pills or something like that. Anyway, while you've got that out, bit of sound deadening, bit of insulation. So this is midway, it, that bit will get finished off, but as it stands now, that's where we've got to. So for me, the one point, fixed point that I use and work from, is where this handle sits here, because it's kind of level in the van, everything else sweeps round. So when I built my shelf, I made it level with the top of this part of the handle. So that comes through. And where that finishes, I'll give you a gap here. It's pretty good to be honest. It's, it is about the only level part to work off in this section. So just bear that in mind. Something else to remember is, when you've got your headliner out, always store it in that position. If you stand it up over time and with moisture, that will start to curve in and you don't want it to curve in. You want to maintain that shape. Then, get yourself a decent piece of cardboard, because you're going to have to make a big template. And that's where we're off to next. So, while well, we've got it stood up, there you go, that's the mark there. We don't want to come any lower than that when we're installing our timber. So you want to leave a couple of mil gap, so when you're putting the handle back in, it doesn't interfere with, with the new shelf that's going to be in there. Handy that, how it's left all them marks, little guides, but yeah, that's the level we're going off. So we'll be five, ten mil above that. So basically, we're going to cut a template that will fit that out of cardboard. Then, once we've got that honed to the exact size, we'll then cut it in timber, and then we're going to sandwich this headline in between two bits of timber so we'll fasten into the timber that we've cut and then we'll screw from this side once we've got that bit done it's just a matter of then of, of doing the headline and um, using a four-way stretch and just manipulating it to, to all fit the easy part <laughs> to be honest with you so that's the train position so when we put our timber in it's going to come through from about this angle here and shoot through underneath there to the front come round and this repeat itself on there so we'll actually be taking a little bit off the front of there but 
it'll still leave you a good two, three inch gap. So what we've done there is, as we look at that piece there, where it angles down, it's about halfway through that hole at the front there, and that one that side. So I've measured that, that's 18 and a half inches. So we're going to transfer that mark onto here, which we've done. And then we've put our template up against it, and we've just freehanded that last little bit round. So what I'm going to do now is fold this in half and cut it out. Actually, I might just cut one half out, fold it over, and then scribe the template on. So that's that cut out, and marked up. We'll just cut the rest of it out now and then offer it up. Let's see how it fits. So somewhere, I've got my calculations a little bit wrong, but don't fear, because all we've got to do is pull it that way, and everything lines up. So obviously, we need to trim about, I would say, <coughs> an inch and a half off. So all we'll do is we'll split that down the middle, and we'll just tape it back up. And that'll, that'll, that's the start of our template. This is the most tricky part here. Once we've got that, just a matter of trimming a little bit off there, into that corner, and then trimming where it fits. So there we go, we've cut it down the middle, we've brought it in, it looks a lot tighter. We've actually put some material underneath to mimic where it's going to sit, just to spread it out a little bit. I'll put some black tape along that edge, just to, just to give us a bit of a better guide when I'm marking up. And as you can see, there is a bit of a void there. So I need to add a little piece of card from here down to there. And all we'll do is we'll tape that on. We'll do the same on the other side. And that's our template complete. And we can then go and start cutting it. Right, that is the template made. And as you see, I've just stuck some bits on the side where we were short. There was a little bit there I wasn't happy with as well. So that now gives us a complete template. So all we need to do is straight line that back edge. Um, I wasn't going to try and cut that with a pair of scissors. I'll just get a metal ruler or something and straight line that. Well, there you go. One template made. Well, we're back down at Cliffs. There he is. There's the magician over there. Just wondering about it's it's red hot in here today. But we've come down. We're going to finish off this headline and for him today. We're going to have a another go at it. But um, we've left it a couple of weeks now while he while he pushed on and did the van. But uh, it's got to the point now where we need to finish it. So well, the plan was to transfer that template onto this new bit of card. But I think what we'll do is because it's on, like pretty good now we'll just transfer that straight onto the timber but let me just show you where we're seating it at so if I lift this bit up here if I can get it up what we're doing is where that flat piece is this piece of wood will kind of sit just there don't forget we're doing our little bits of it just misses that I've actually moved this so I'll just pull it back a little bit so there you go, that'll be our our gap there above the handle. Just drop down this side, but you get the you get the gist of it. That's where we're gonna sit. And that is plenty enough room to store loads. I store all my clothes in there and I store all, all my winter jackets and everything. So plenty of room. And uh, this is gonna be left open actually. They're going to put a TV in there and they're also going to put a uh, PlayStation. So, something to keep the kids occupied while they're travelling. Right, that's a template. That's the wood. Let's do the good stuff. Let's see if we can do that magic thing again where all the YouTubers go. And there it is. Just like that. <laughs> so, we've laid the shelf in. The marks we're working to are the dirty marks. <laughs> <laughs> really, we are working to the dirty marks. So you want a good 5-10mm between there. That'll give you a little bit of room on your handles. This one's a little bit low, but we know we need to bump it up. So just to bump it up, we just need to slide this little clip up. And if you watch, it'll come up to where I want it. There you go. So now, we're putting a pen line right round down there. 
So these little gaps here, you're never going to get this perfect. So you have to you have to make a decision where you're going to sacrifice. As long as this is good round here, everything else will fall into place. When you put your auto trim on, it'll bridge that gap anyway. This you're never going to see because it's under the tray. So that's the tray in position. Like I said, you can't see anything. Fluorescent lights to play with the camera. So you can see what I mean about leaving the gap? That there will just sit nice and tight up against it. And that will give you, remember, this is all upside down. Still allows you to use that as a storage. Same on this side. Yeah, I'll literally just put a pen mark along that edge. So we know where we're working to. Don't forget, you're never going to see this again, so it doesn't really matter how tidy you do it. And that is it. I'm sure there's some uh, fat react against being too hot at work. Just have to sue my brother. Sweatshop. There's laws, I'm sure there is laws against being overworked. Doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. Doing nothing. Craft. Doing nothing. He has made that, by the way. That is a slidey out bed. I'm not going to show you it now, we'll show it later when it's finished. But that's going to be full of motocrossers and motocross bikes when it's finished. It won't look like a Dalmatian either when it's finished. Next step I do is I drill a number of holes all the way around. Um, we're going to lose these once we carpet this section here because. We don't want this colour to be seen and it's going to be open. We need to carpet this section, so Cliff's cutting that now. We'll glue that in. And then we're going to have to do this in three parts. So we'll do this section, we'll do the wooden shelf, one side of that, and then we'll fix it in place. These holes are to indicate where the line is and where it should be fitting in place. So just a little guide for us, but that should keep us on the right path. And then once we've got the shelf screwed in place, we will cover this bit and then the remaining part of the, what is going to be the roof lining then. I've missed that. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's make sure we've got everywhere covered. Do a little bit round here. Right, we'll give that 10 minutes to go off. Let's prep on the other side. And then we'll get it stuck in. Now, something you need to remember. With four-way stretch carpet, there is two sides to it. So if you look at that, I'll show you, that's kind of like a felt kind of finish on it. And this side is more like a fleecy style finish. So if you remember that, the fleecy side is the side you want facing out. The felty side is the side that you want to glue. So that there is quite a, it's not very pretty, but bear in mind, we all make this mistake, we will glue the wrong side at least once, maybe twice. Better get the sign in there. Better get the big sign in. So the, the battery on the phone died, so I'm still over charging it at the minute, that's why I'm so far away. Let's just watch the master at work. Mr. Miyagi of van building. <laughs> yes, Danielson. 
He's not listening, is he? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How old school is that? They've got an outside bell on the telephone. Here it is. That's the body shop over the road. Look at him. Pull, tuck, pull and tuck. That's, that's the master at work. Look, look, look. Watch his technique. Pull and tuck, pull and tuck. Look at him. There he goes, stretching again. Give it a little pull. Don't be gentle with this stuff either, Eccles. No. Absolutely, do not be gentle with it. If you want a good finish, give it a good pull. <laughs> do you hear what I said then? Give it a, if you want to. Oh, forget it. Innuendo. Innuendos. But here's the thing, look at this right. Look at how much effort is going to this, and you're never going to see this. This is going to be up, in the roof line in, and it'll never be done, but... This is where quality and craftsmanship comes into it. You spend the time and you do every job the same way, your standards will not slip. And to me, that's what it's all about. Having good standards, good ethics, and sticking to your principles and doing what you do right every time. Keep doing it the same way, and you know yourself, in your heart of hearts, you've done the best job you can do. See that? Just take the time, work the creases out, rub the sawdust in. <laughs> That's all that is. That's just glue with sawdust. It's not glue or anything, just a bit of sawdust. It'll all clean off. So, we repeated the process. We've covered the shelf on one side. But when you come to do your corners and joints, put some little cuts in. Stay a good bit back, about 10, 15 mil. Because you're going to... You just basically e easing the carpet to allow you to pull it round the corners. And there you go, that's the internal shelf there. Finished off. Something you'll probably never see again. But, done to the right standard. Picking all the little bits out now. So that there is going to go face down on that piece there. Chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right, we'll get them clamps on. Well, now we've got the shelf in, there's a little job we have to do now. We have to go around and put pieces of timber along this edge. What we've done is put a screw in there. You should see that. Put a screw in there, that just holds this in position, stops it from moving. But what we're going to do now is screw these pieces of wood through, just like that, and they will sandwich the shelf and this and pinch the original headline in and that stop this stops the screws from pulling through really and that is all you need to do in all honesty the weight will be carried on this um, I've, I've had mine in for two years now you're doing it this way and I've had no problems I'll show you the other side because we've actually done that so we have a piece there a piece there we've got one to go there and there's one in the center there's actually a big one in the center so, I think it's two pieces in the centre. Can't remember if we've cut you that yet. But anyway, we'll come back to that. So, three to mount down here. One to go over there. And I think two in the centre. And that's just done. Okay, so this little bit at the front here is the awkward bit. But as you can see, we've got three screws in there. What we're going to do is line that little piece up there. That will bend to suit. And the way I've got them screws, we're going to clash... Having a little look to see if I take that middle one out, that will fit and that one will go in. What we need to do is step that one over in that side. It just clashes with the screw that's going to go in. So what we'll do is move that in about half an inch and then that's us sorted and we can crack on and screw that one in. So the final supports I've put in are three screws straight through and there's a piece of timber on the back just to brace it there, there and there I know it doesn't look a lot but it's more than enough so we've got them three pieces down there there's two 
brackets that sit in there so we've got plenty of room behind here to have these let me just zoom out there's plenty of room behind there two metal brackets that is the distance it sits basically off the off the panel off the internal panel of the van so we're now in a position to line the actual headlining so that's the shelf original shelf just sat back in just to show you how much room that you still do have you can easily get your hand in there and utilize that but that is the inside of our overhead storage compartment now we've lined the top lined the bottom and now we're just going to do this headlining so that's where the headlining's going our overhead storage compartment let's just finish lining it out so you'll get this big carpeted up we're nearly there bit dark in here isn't it so that's the bed bit that pulls out extends this to a full bed still a work in progress but that is what's going to be there it won't come that far out it'll stop about there there's a bed down the bottom that pulls out as well yeah there you go full double there and a would you say a full double well that's a king size up there isn't it that's a king that's a king and that'll be a double down there that's just shy of a double it's a double it's a double it's an economy double double for sure people <laughs> yeah most motocross riders are small midget on his knees again cutting anyway i've done my bit we've got that in now it's glued cliff's just trimming the auto trim we'll glue that up and then we'll get this stuck on and that's us finished apart from sticking it in there is a little bit of uh, timber to add let me show you along this edge here because this is going to hold like a playstation and a tv what we're going to do is put a little edge a little lip along there on the bottom side and that'll just um, stop anything from sliding out dvds controllers stuff like that but we might actually put a little lip right along there just to finish it off. Have you got extra hands here? Yeah, I'm with you, sleep there. Which way? Again, I've got this back edge because it's the edge that I pull. And it goes all back on that front. Yeah, yeah. So this is the tricky bit, you've just got to take your time and do a little bit at a time. Just work it in nice and slow, just keep looking at it, making sure that it's not creasing and not leaving any big bubbles anywhere. Well, you can see it's starting to take shape now. I think you'll admit that that looks really good like doesn't it do you still use them fancy scissors about you they hurt man do they hi they still sit in me in the the scissors oh i don't know you just you constantly use them behind the butch and uh, foot you need some ergonomic ones in there one special that noise. <laughs> the last nearly in full build, but nearly done. We just need to fit it, I think. Trial fit. Cliff's pulling faces. I don't think he's happy with a trial fit. Anyway, I'm going to show you how it looks. So we've just carried on, and there you go. That is a finished job. I think it looks pretty neat pretty tidy we haven't finished this edge off yet because we're going to do a little bit of trimming when we get it in position so we're going to pull that edge over and then that'll go into a seal 
I think, onto the trim in the panel. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? What do I mean? Well, where the clips go in, <laughs> there's a little uh, lip there, so we're going to tidy up to that lip. And uh, when we bring the roof in, it should all dress in nice and tidy. There you go. Are we having a trial run? Yeah. Alright, I. So, see where that bulkhead there, that, that beam going across, the clips going to there. Yeah. And put holes in there. <laughs> and the shit clips, they're absolute yeah, arsehole the, clips. The one's, one's still in it, oh dear. Well, it's in. A little bit of detailing to do around this edge. Um, we just didn't know how it was going to marry up, so we're going to fold that over next and uh, make some pieces to fill in these bits on the side. The guys just want this open, so I think what we'll do is we'll just close that down, maybe even make a piece that'll go right across the front. Undecided yet. It is still a work in progress. That brings us to the end of yet another video. That's as far as we can go on this build. Um, there's a few more jobs to do before that bit there gets finished off. But that's how we build overhead lockers. So hopefully that helps. If you've got any questions, just stick, uh, stick them in the comment box below. We'll try and answer them. See you again. Thanks for watching. For all you guys that stick around to the end of the videos, thank you very, very much. I got a massive response last week when I uh, asked you to say I do if you stuck around. So cheers for that. Really enjoyed it. <laughs>